The next lesson is about interior angles of regular polygons. This one's kind of interesting, and I just really want to show you a trick um, that is a way to figure out the measurement of each interior angle. Uh, regular polygons, what's that, what that means is each angle is the same measurement, and each side length is also the same. So you might wonder, a polygon is an enclosed figure. If it's a regular polygon, what I mean by that is we're going to talk about an equilateral triangle where every side length is the same size and every angle is 60 degrees. So again, we also want to talk about regular polygons when it comes to just a square. I know there are lots of four-sided figures out there, but a square, all of the side lengths are the same length. And all of the angles, you know in a square, all of the angles are 90 degrees. Okay, they're all the same measurement. Then when we get into some different shapes like pentagons, we're going to talk about regular pentagons because a regular pentagon, again, all of these side lengths would be the same measurement. All of these angles would be the same size. Okay, so going back to the, to the beginning here, let's talk about an equilateral triangle. We've been doing some work, and I think everybody knows that an equilateral triangle adds up to 180 degrees, right? If we take 180 degrees and we divide it by 3, because there are 3 angles, we get 60 degrees. So I hope that's not a big surprise. An equilateral triangle has angles each being 60 degrees, because they all have to be the same measurement since all of the sides are the same length. This is special for an equilateral triangle where all of the angle measurements are 60 degrees. Okay, so we know a lot about triangles. This is where the trick comes in. This is a pretty cool thing. Let's say you don't know what the angles of a square add up to. So the interior angles of a square on the inside, what they would add up to how many triangles would be inside of a square? So if we pick a common vertex, that's the important thing. If you pick a common vertex and divide the square, it becomes two triangles. So what I want you to notice is that there are two triangles inside of a square. What that means is, if I look at all of these angles, all of those angles would add up to um, 180 degrees for each triangle. So if we know that we have 180 degrees in each triangle, okay, so 2 times 180 degrees uh, on a calculator is 360 degrees. So what we know about a square is that the angles add up to 360 degrees inside of a four-sided figure. So then if we took 360 degrees and divide it by 4, the reason I would divide it by 4 is because what if I wanted to know the measurement of each of these angles? Let's just say I didn't know. Okay, if I wanted to know how large each angle is, when I divide by 4, I get 90 degrees. So what I end up determining is that each interior angle of a square is 90 degrees, and they add up to a square. The interior angles of a square add up to 360 degrees. And that is true for any four-sided polygon. Let's keep going and look at a pentagon, uh, a regular pentagon. What I need you to do is imagine choosing one common vertex. And then if we draw triangles from that common vertex, let's see how many triangles we get. In a pentagon, we get three triangles. So I also want you to think of this pattern. If it's a five-sided figure, we get three triangles. The square, if it was a four-sided figure, we got two triangles out of that. So I want you to start to think about what that kind of pattern is, how many triangles we're going to get, and maybe I'll ask you for the hexagon to guess. The pentagon, if we have three triangles, I know that all of my angles, so if I mark them like this, All of those angles add up to 180 degrees for each triangle. So in a pentagon, there's three triangles. If I take 3 times 180, I get 540 degrees. 
So I know that the interior angles of a pentagon add up to 540 degrees. If I want to know how large each angle is, if I want to know how big this angle is, this one, this one, this one, I would take 540 degrees and I would divide it by however many angles there are. And since it's a pentagon, there are five sides, five angles. Okay, it's the same number, five. We're going to divide by five. 540 divided by 5 is 108. I have just found that each angle of a pentagon, each interior angle of a pentagon is 108 degrees. Okay, and there's five of them. Like that. All right. So it's really a trick. If I if you weren't shown this trick, it might be hard to come up with on your own. But once you do know the trick, it's quite easy. Uh, on different tests and assignments, you might be asked for the sum of the interior angles of a 20-sided figure or a 30-sided figure. And I wouldn't really want you to draw them, but there is this pattern that's happening here that I want you to be aware of. So a hexagon has six sides. Have you figured out how many triangles would be inside of a hexagon? So a five-sided figure had three. A six-sided figure has four. If you thought four, you're right. If we pick a common vertex and we start to draw triangles from that common vertex, you'll notice there are four triangles. If there's six sides, there's always two less triangles, okay? We take off two from six and we get four triangles, which is a really neat trick. So um, if we had six sides, I wanna know what all of those angles add up to together. Four triangles, I know each triangle is 180 degrees. So four times 180 is 720. So I know all of the interior angles of a hexagon add up to 720. When I try and figure out how the measurement of each angle, so again, we're going to go back like this, I want to know how the measurement of each one, and they're all the same, I could take 720, and I don't divide it by 4, I divide it by however many angles there are. And if it's a hexagon, there's 6 sides, 6 angles. So I divide by 6 to find the measurement of each one. And each angle is 120 degrees. So all of these would be 120 degrees. Um, heptagon, seven sides. I want you to know right away there would be five triangles. You don't have to draw these out every time. Like I said, if I ask you for a 30-sided figure, that would have 28 triangles inside. There's always two less. So just, just so that you trust me, um, if we start going from a common vertex, I want to know two, three, four, five. A heptagon is a seven-sided figure, has five triangles on the interior. Um, very, very common. This is what's happening with all of our diagrams. Okay, we always take two off. Five times 180 degrees is 900. So I know that on the inside of a heptagon, the angles add up to 900 degrees. Each angle now is a little bit different. We want to figure out the measurement of each one. Heptagon means seven. There's seven sides, seven angles. I take 900 divided by seven, and I get 128 decimal five seven degrees. So each one, I know we have a decimal this time, but that's okay. Each one is 128.57 degrees. You get the idea. Every single interior angle. Octagon, eight sides, six triangles, right? I don't need to keep drawing. You know there'd be six. So what I would do with that for an octagon, I would take six and multiply it by 180 degrees. And six times 180 is 1,080 degrees. So that's what they all add up to. And then, to figure out the measurement of each one, I know octagon, eight sides, eight angles. There's eight all together. 1,080 divided by eight is 135 degrees. Okay, so each angle is 135 degrees. 
So a nonagon, I don't know if you've talked about nonagons a lot, but a nonagon has nine sides. Nine sides, seven triangles. Seven times 180 is 1,260 degrees. That's what they all add up to, to figure out the measurement of each one. There are nine sides, nine angles. Seven, eight, nine. So we're going to take 1,260 degrees and divide it by nine. And we get 140 degrees. Each angle inside a regular nonagon is 140 degrees, each one. A decagon has 10 sides. 10 sides, 8 triangles, right? We don't even have to do this anymore. We don't have to divide them up. 8 times 180 degrees is 1,440. I'm not magic. I use a calculator to figure this out too. You can use your calculators in class. 1,440. Um, there are 10 angles though because a, a decagon has 10 sides. 10 angles. So we take 1,440 divided by 10 and we get 144. So each one, first of all, they add up to 1,440 and the measurement of each one is 144. So if we want to write it on, you could write this on your own sheet. So if, a, if there's some question, sometimes on your EQAO test or on a, on a Unit tests will ask you, ooh, there's a 34-sided figure. Please don't attempt to draw a 30... How would you draw a 34-sided figure? It's going to be quite difficult. 34 sides, 32 triangles, right? Really quick, what the product is there, you would divide it by 34, okay? There's a pattern, and every single shape follows the same rule. 